Today, friends, I'm going to show you how to quickly make a virtual machine of Puppy Linux. So let's get cracking. Real quickly, let's start with the Puppy Linux forum. A simple Google search will get you there in moments. Of course, I do recommend registering. I do want to highlight that there's tons of beginner help and instructional how to's. But right now, today, we are going to go to the mainline puppy distributions. There are a ton to choose from. We are going to use Fossa 96 CE. We're going to simply grab the latest stable release. You can, of course, read all of the information, but you don't have to. I'm going to go right here to the ISO and we're going to simply download it. It only takes a moment to get it started and, of course, save it to your hard drive. I've already got it in my downloads folder. That's how quickly it gets started. So I'm going to simply hit cancel. Next up, you need Oracle's Virtual Box. You can see I've built a few of these. Right now, we're going to start by hitting Machine and choosing New. Mine will be called Puppy 96 CE, and I'm going to put a 2 after it because I've already got one. I'm going to keep the folder they have, and then we've got to find the ISO image. When I click the down arrow, you can select where they're at. You can see this is my 96 CE that we downloaded a little bit ago. I'm going to call this a Linux one. I'm not going to be super picky. I am going to just choose Oracle 64-bit Linux and then click Next. You can pick how much RAM you want. I'm going to just drag this across until it's 4 gig of RAM. I'm going to use two CPUs for mine, and I do need Enable EFI and hit Next. I am going to create a virtual hard drive. I'm going to only make mine 4 gigabytes which is pretty small, but it's fine for what I'm doing with this. You may want to make yours larger. I'm going to simply hit next and finally hit finish. We can double click to launch it. Once we get here, press enter. This whole process took less than 60 seconds, but I'm going to speed it up with video editing. And bingo, we're in Puppy Linux. Now we'll make the screen larger in just a moment. First thing I'm going to do is set my time zone. I also want the firewall, time from the internet. If you scroll down, you can see all of those. And then I can simply hit OK. The firewall pops up and I can simply apply the default. And the time pops up and I'm going to let it synchronize every time. And I'm going to allow it to always do that. You can hear Puppy Linux come to life. There's all kinds of good things you can read right here. I'm going to simply hit what should be an X. Now, friends, let's make this a little larger. Move down to Setup, and I want to find this Screen Graphics Manager. I want to change the resolution. For this project right here, I'm going to set mine to 1920 by 1080 and tell it OK and Yes. Bingo, our screen is larger. I'm going to hide the mouse in integration, and I'm going to fix a few things on this desktop. First, if you right click and go to JWM desk. Notice these do not show up as a default. We're going to fix those super quickly by hitting window, button, button theme. You can pick any of these. I'm going to use Ubuntu. Notice now it's real easy to see which one is the X and so on and so forth. I can close that. Go back to the desktop. I like a blue background. So I'm just going to apply that one. I also like a different icon theme. I'm going to go with Mocha. And then we can hit quit and quit on those. There are lots of amazing things you can mess with right here. This information that was on the right is part of Conky. Notice if I hit restart, it'll have all this data. I have run into some users that don't like seeing that. So I just want to show you that you can hit stop and you can set auto start to off so that you never see it anymore. Now let's install it to that hard drive. First step is to go to System, Gparted, find that VirtualBox hard disk, tell it OK. When it launches, we need to create a partition table. Stay with MS-DOS, tell it Apply. We're going to do New, and we need to make a boot folder. I'm going to tell you 250 meg is plenty. We want that to be FAT32. I'm going to name it boot just because I do. And hit add. I'm going to take the rest and make it a new ext4. And I'm going to call it Linux. And hit add. 
hit the check mark to apply it, and close. And then we want to make sure we manage the boot flag so that it knows that's a boot area. And close. And close. Now, friends, we can move to the setup and find Disk Pup. This is the minimal frugal installer. Very few options. Super simple. We want to install it using this, which means what we booted with. We want to put it on that ext4. This is the partition that contains Puppy. You could put it in folders. I choose not to. And then we want to put the boot files on that boot partition we created. Finally, tell it OK and let the script do its magic. Bingo. Now we can leave. I'm going to choose Reboot, Shutdown, and the first save appears. It says, do you want to save what you did? I do want to save it in what's called a pup save file. I'm going to simply hit continue and normal. Save it to a folder. Tell it OK. I'm going to call this FOSS96. Hit OK. Double check, make sure you've got the folders you want. And I'm going to say yes. And when it shuts down, we want to take out that ISIL by simply hitting remove disk. So now the only thing we have is that hard drive. We can then double click and let FOSA boot on its own. Once again, this took 45 seconds, but I'm using video editing to speed it up. And after just a few minutes, you are back in your brand new Linux environment. You can experiment as much as you want figuring out all the cool tools that are included in Puppy Linux. So friends, those are the simple steps to create your own virtual machines with any flavor of Puppy Linux. Of course, friends, I would love to hear in the comments which one you find to be your favorite. Finally, friends, I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon. It has been so fantastic watching that community grow. Of course, you can find more information using the links below. I would also like to thank you for watching this video. Don't forget every time that you hit that like button, add a comment, share a video, or hit subscribe. You're helping HL Mod Tech get just a little bit bigger, which absolutely makes my day. Friends, have a glorious day and keep tinkering.